So I'm working on this part, and I'm going to pretend it's this circular piece of stock today. But the problem is the bottom of it that comes out of the lathe, that comes out like this. And then I have it held in the robot. So I have it held in the robot like this. This bottom surface right here is a locating feature that I use in the robo drill. Well, there's some milling that's done on that face, and there's it's it's pretty there's burrs all over it. And right now we're sanding it by hand, and then we're sticking it in the robo drill, and it and it locates really good. But I mean the robot's just sitting there waiting for the light to go off. Why can't I make it sand the parts instead? That's pretty much what I'm going to do today. I I tested it out a little bit last night, and I came up with one method to sand the part, but I'm going to see if I can't do better today, and then once I figure something out, I'm going to show how I did it. But essentially, what I have going on so far, I have this circular pad. I just got this off McMaster. It has a stick back. I peeled it off, and I stuck it on this plate of aluminum, and then I'm grabbing the part with my jaws, and I'm just going to go over here, apply a little force, and go in a circular direction like this. I'm going to loop that maybe three or four times just to knock all those burrs off and then pick it back up. After I pick it back up, this is where I stack the parts. So when, like finished parts, I'll pick it back up and I'll set one down here and I'll go one, two, three, four parts right there. I'm not going to show that stack, but I'm just going to show down sand and then back up. I'm gonna see what I can develop, and then uh, once I get something good, I'll go through it. So here's a tip, if you're ever trying to locate in something flat like I am with that table, I go and I go into my templates and I just put in a force and then I'm going to select Z, R, X, R, Y and just leave zero in there. And then when you do the test, now you can see it's, you know, it can move freely around that center point and then I can just bring my part down to my surface my part has a flat surface on it, I just press on the joint. I don't know if you can see it or not, the robot is shaking like in that area because it's super flat. And if I release it, I hit it again and then release it, now it's now it's located that surface. So yeah, again, I just hit test with um, like set up as a frame. Actually, you can do tool as well. Tool is probably better for the feature. And then frame. Z, R, X, R, Y, test, and then I go down to my surface, and I just push on it, release it, push on it again, release it, and now it's planed out. Even if it, this was at a slight angle, it would still do the same thing, and then after that, I just delete that force function. Now to make sure that I don't lose being planed out to that, I'm going to switch my feature to tool. And then in my free drive section, I'm going to do the three, so just X, Y, and Z. That'll keep my rotation locked. So now I can free drive up and over. And now my rotation is locked to this surface. Perfect. All right, I think I got something that works pretty good. I'm gonna show you how I wrote it. So, just ideology, this part's starting up here in just a move J. And it's gonna move down to a location slightly above this sandpaper 
And then I'm going to use a move P to do a circular move. So I'm going to point, put a point here, put a point here, and then one here. So that'll be a circular move like this. I'm going to nest that in a loop and tell it to loop like, I don't know, but how many ever times you really need, but for me it's going to be four or five. And all of that is nested inside of a force that is based off of the tool that is applied down. And for me, I chose uh, what I choose. I had like four pounds down. So it's going to nest a circular move in a forced in a loop. So this, this is what it looks like. So up here I have my move J. And then my waypoint one, I'll do that move. So this is waypoint one. And then I see, you know, my waypoint two, that is the same as down close. So that it's actually the interesting part is that waypoint two, the via point and end point, they're all slightly off the sandpaper. They don't have to be touching the surface, especially when I'm doing a force function. That force will push it down to the surface. I, they don't have to be on the surface exactly. You know, for testing, then I can put my force at zero and I can do all my testing right above the sandpaper. So I, I went to waypoint two. That just gets it into position. Then I call a force and I do the frame. I, I, I don't really mess with the simple too much, but I did a frame four pounds, six inches a second, which the normal is like five point something. I just rounded up a little bit. So I made sure I was on the tool and Z is checked. Then I put a loop in there, which is an advanced. Okay, actually back on force. Force is in templates. Loop is in advanced. So I looped it X times five. And then I put a move P, which I just had to do move and then switch it up here. And then it's based off of the base. It doesn't really matter. So my waypoint two, same point I'm in right now. And then here, uh, yeah, here, once you add a waypoint, you can do an add circle move. It'll drop this thing down right here. And then make sure that unconstrained is on because if it wasn't, if it wasn't, it would, this would start here and it would rotate around the circle like this. But I don't want that to happen. I want to keep position and just rotate like this. So that's why unconstrained is on. And then my via point, I'll move there. That's just in the top corner of the sandpaper. And then end point is kind of in that other corner over here already. And that's just three points to make a circle. So one, two, three. And then from this point back to waypoint two, it's going to have to blend a little bit. It's not going to be a perfect circular feature because I have it looped. It's, it's not going to be a perfect circle, but it'll be about right, especially if you play with the uh, radius, the blend radius right here. So I have, set a, I, I have all these set at point one. Okay, and then the other weird thing I had to do is I have a waypoint three here. So after the waypoint two and the circle move, this endpoint kept going to a blend radius of zero and it kept messing it up and it would stop right in this bottom corner. So for some reason this worked for me. I put a waypoint there and then this allowed it to go to point one and then I just blocked it out with this button right here. So there's on and there's off. I don't know what's going on internally for that to happen. I, I mean, it shouldn't, it should just work, but maybe it's, I don't know what calculation it's messing up internally, but for some reason I put this here and I blocked it out. It works just fine. And the last thing I do outside of all of this built in, I just raise back up to waypoint one, which is going to be above. All right, I'm going to play it out. Uh, simulation probably on the screen, and then I'm going to show you what it does here. So we can go graphics, 
It's kind of hard to zoom in and show you this. So there's a simulation. It goes through this, it goes for loop, and then it just loops the move P five times, and then it breaks out, and then it goes to waypoint one, it raises back up. So here's how it looks in real life. So you could see it looped through the move P and then jumped out and then popped back up. That piece is kind of uneven on the bottom, so it's only really sanding in one spot, you know, maybe one or two, but like obviously the pieces that I'm pulling out of the lathe, they're super flat, so if I get them on that surface right, it's, it's going to sand it good. The, what I tried yesterday is I actually did the force and I tried to put that circle move inside of a force. Well, the problem I run into is if the move P was up here and then I did a force function inside of move P and then my waypoint, I couldn't put a circle move inside the force. So instead today I put a force up top and then, and then loop and then move P. So what I did yesterday to make it work without the, without the circle move is I did my move up top and then I did a force and then inside that force I made like, I made like six waypoints. So Instead of doing a circle move, I just made one, two, three, four, five, six, or something like that. And then I blended them all with like a 0.1 radius. And it, so it's kind of moving like in a hexagon shape, but you can't tell at that small of a circle that it was doing that. And it, I mean, it worked all right, but the weird part was is once it got to that last waypoint, it would move slowly from, from the waypoint. When it does the loop, it would move slow from that last waypoint to the initial again. Well, then the robot looks like it's doing this, and then it would slow down and move over, and then do another one. But now with a circle move, it's way more fluid, and it just moves in a circle. So if any of you had any application where you were trying to figure something out like that, hopefully this helps, but I mean, I see a lot of people, when they do sanding on these robots, they hold a piece, and then they have a motorized sander on the other side, and they'll just, you know, twist or something like that, and not do too much work with the robot and do a lot of work you know, with a motorized sander, but here I just want to use sandpaper, so I have to do a lot of work with the robot. If you're looking for something that maybe has to fit a profile like that, well, try this code out, you know, tinker with it, see what you can find out. If anybody can figure out how to run this without the uh, blocked out waypoint three I have, I want to know what's going on there. That seems weird to me that it, basically what would happen is if I didn't have that in there, I would, point, I would put in my blend radius for my end point, and then when it got around to that point, it would just be like, oh, radius is too small, and it would reset it to zero every time. But for some reason, when I put in this end waypoint and I blocked it out, it kept its blend radius. I, I don't know, if somebody can figure that out, that'd be cool. That would just be one less thing to look at in this stack of nested stuff. If anybody else has any ideas for how to do something like this motion, or it, maybe somebody does linear sanding just back and forth on a feature. I'd like to know about it, so let me know.